Okay, in this video I'm going to talk about this. So this is a Stella, that's the name of the company, headless kit guitar that I bought from the guitar warehouse which is um, I believe they're in Ireland but they're, they're a retailer selling kit guitars on eBay and I'd never heard of the company before Stella I, I think they're probably Chinese um, anyway the kits they got, there's a number of different kits and they're about something like a hundred euros that kind of money um, they've got this one which is um, a sort of full body uh, headless guitar with a Steve Vai Gem monkey grip handle um, you've got a, a miniature uh, Hohner stroke Steinberger style travel headless guitar um, I bought one of those as well and I'll, I'll put a video up showing me um, assembling that um, they got strats and Gibson Les Paul copies that you know a range of stuff but I've always fancied a headless guitar um, so I went online and I saw well you can still get um, Steinbergers and some and, and little mini uh, travel guitars and um, but they some of them are quite expensive uh, and I saw these kits and I thought, well, that, that's that's uh, a lot less money. And this wasn't even a hundred euros because what the guitar warehouse did uh, is they put this on an open auction, um, a no reserve auction, with a very low start price. So I actually got this for about 40, 45 um, pounds, including postage. Um, so I thought it was worth a shot. So in uh, another video that I've put up. Um, I'll, I, uh, I cover the ins and outs of how I um, what comes in the kit and how I assembled it. But uh, in this video, I'll kind of walk you through the, the finished product uh, of the assembled finished assembled guitar and um, give you some more information about how I how I finished it and, and what I think uh, of the of the finished uh, guitar. Well, what do I think of it? It's absolutely fantastic. Um, it has turned out brilliantly from a from a playing um, point of view. Um, the quality of the of the of the um, tone coming from the guitar is really good. Um, it's a great piece of wood. Uh, the neck and the body, uh, the strings vibrate really well. Um, it's a great resonance when you play you can feel the, um, the vibration for your body I've owned a lot of guitars uh, some expensive guitars and, and um, I've gotten rid of £1,000 plus guitars because they're quite honestly they're pretty rubbish I mean they were nicely finished um, obviously great good paint jobs expensive hardware but they they just suck they didn't have um, it didn't feel good. The, 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 the vibration of the strings, uh, the, the, the tone coming off, just, it just wasn't, they weren't alive. So I've gotten rid of a few guitars, um, but this one I certainly will be keeping because it really does sound good. And there could be some um, few reasons for that perhaps. Uh, maybe a more experienced luthiers out there might have an answer as to what makes a, um, a, a guitar gives the guitar magic so it actually um, sounds good um, but this has certainly certainly got that even though it's <laughs> really really cheap and ostensibly um, a lot of people would just dismiss it as a, as a cheap rubbish kit and they wouldn't even waste the time with it but I'm so glad I did take the time uh, to uh, uh, you know buy it and assemble it because <laughs> I've gotten something quite quite amazing for only a few quid. Um, now I have an Ibanez Steve Vai Gem which is an amazing guitar. I've got a, a late 80s one and that, that has definitely got the magic. It's a great piece of wood and the, 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 vibe, the tone of the strings is, is fantastic. Um, so I've, kept, I've had that for you know, 20, 25 plus years. And um, 
And now this, I'm using this most of the time now as a, a recording in guitar and, and, and practicing. And obviously, it's um, because it's a lot less money. <laughs> I don't play the gem so much because I don't want to wear it out. Um, so let's run through uh, what I've done to it um, to finish it off. Well, first thing you might notice is it's got this quite interesting um, paint job. So I showed on the other video that I um, how I initially treated the wood with just a simple wood stain, coloured wood stain that you can get from B and Q, which really designed for, for um, outdoor fences. So that you know. I'm not a, obviously I'm not a luthier. I just kind of winged this. I thought I'd try and do something cheap and easy that would look okay. Um, so I got the thought, thought about the coloured wood stain. And you can see, see that gives you an idea of what the colour of the of the wood stain I put on the back. It's like a, an orangey colour, and then I put a pink wood stain around the around the side. And then what I did was I thought, well, that looks all right, but it's a bit boring. So I, I got some. Um, UV reactive paints from eBay. Um, I think it was eBay, I can't remember now. I might have just Googled it, but uh, I'll show you the paint in a minute. Um, but I, sp I got a, a, a kit of five different colours like a blue, a yellow, an orange, a green, and a kind of a, a, a maroon. And I just splashed them on Jackson Pollock style. And you probably can't quite appreciate it in this. Um, in these uh, in, in, under the electric lights, but it, in daylight, this thing really glows. The uh, I mean the this uh, UV this graffiti is sort of UV reactive, so it looks really really cool in, in daylight. Um, so I'll show you the uh, one of the paints. This is the uh, sort of UV neon star glow. This name of the company, so you, you can get these on the net. It's about 20 quid for five different colours and they're acrylic based, they're water based so it makes that easier to clean up after you put them on um, so then how to get this this glossy lacquer, uh, sort of lacquered style finish that you see well I did think about spray painting there's loads of videos on YouTube um, where people um, spray paint on lacquer and obviously if you, if you do it right you'll get a great finish I can't do it right. I am rubbish at spray painting. I've tried spray painting stuff in the past and it always comes out um, pretty rubbish. Um, so I thought I didn't want to do that. Uh, apart from it, it's a bit of a hassle as well. Um, I'll, I'll try something different and a friend at work suggested that I try um, resin. I thought that's a cool idea. Um, so I went on eBay and got this stuff. There's a company called Chem Resins who sell this uh, Mastercast, uh, these Mastercast resin kits. It's actually two part resin, like most resin. Uh, you, you get the resin itself plus a hardener. With this one, it's a 50-50 it's a mix of resin and hardener. And it's, it's clear, crisp, you know. Um, um, and so I put that on the whole body and, and it, it gives you a really thick, really thick, glossy finish. It's, it's rock hard. Um, it was a bit tricky to put it on actually because um, the resin itself is not very viscous, it's quite runny. So I tried to cover the whole body at one time. So I poured the resin on the top, then I sort of wiped it on the side with um, a spoon. And I turned the, the body over. Well, to do that, I bolted a, a piece of wood into the neck joint so I could support the body and, and keep it off the ground. So obviously, you can't touch it while you're putting the resin, you get fingerprints all over it. So I, uh, I turned it over and poured the resin on the back. And of course, as soon as I turned it over to pour the resin on the back, the resin on the front started to, to drip off with gravity because it, it's fairly runny. Um, I was kind of hoping it would sort of hardened up enough so that I could turn it over and put and, and what I found was I had to keep spinning it like a pig on the poke to, to stop to stop the resin dripping off on one side so I was turning it every couple of minutes and then as, as the resin did eventually start to harden after about 
30, 40 minutes. I was turning it maybe once every two minutes, once every, every three minutes, and then eventually it, um, it all hardened up uh, with a fairly even coat. Now, if you look at it closely, it is it is not even like a, like a professional spray finishes on on a, on a on a factory guitar, but in my opinion, it, it's something that's kind of uniquely cool because I've never seen this on a guitar before because guitars aren't usually finished with resin, are they? But uh, you get this very three um, D texture to the finish. Uh, there's all the little undulations and and inclusions, and you can feel them with your fingers. And the other thing that happens is the resin pulls away from the sharp edges of cutouts and, and around the, the corners here as it hardens, like a surface tension thing. And um, it, it gives a, a really cool um, effect. You can maybe see a little bit what I'm talking about on the back. Can you see there's kind of like a you sort of see the free, the sort of 3D nature of the, uh, of the resin finish. But it's rock hard and um, yeah very cool I think. Um, so other thing the neck. Um, now I haven't checked the neck um, there's loads of videos on YouTube um, there's a, 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 a Lufia um, a guitar, custom guitar shop, Crimson Guitars they put a lot of videos up showing you how to do all this stuff properly. Um, so what I what I haven't done is check the neck for you know how level the neck is and if the frets are level. Um, I just put the neck straight on really and 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 didn't pay any attention to to checking any of that. And it it, it can't be that bad because it it plays brilliantly and there's no dead spots. There was one little imperfection on a on a fret here, a little bit of metal, um, almost a little metal dent. So I have to file that out. But what I will do at some point is I, I will um, check all that and, and um, file the frets if there's any, if you know, if, if it needs it, um, and that might make it even better. But but. <laughs> If you played it now, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't notice there was anything uh, any sort of proud frets or any dead spots or any any buzzing or anything like that. The other cool thing with headless guitars is if you've never owned one before, is uh, I don't know if it's true of all headless guitars, but it seems from all the ones I've seen on on, on the internet it seems to be that they have a zero fret up here. So this special nut. And, and this one here can either take double ball end strings or regular string with single ball end strings and, 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 and they're held in with grub screws at the end. I don't know if you can see that, but um, you can thread a, a regular string through here and then a grub screw. You, you pull the string as tight as you can, tighten the grub screws here, then lock the nut and then tune up at the take the slack out of the string up at the bridge. But, um, Anyway, this particular nut, the strings come out of it very low and then they sort of rise over the zero fret. And the cool thing about the zero fret is you get a very low action down at the, at the nut end. Um, the other really funky thing about this guitar uh, is it, the, the thickness of the neck. It is really thick. I'll bring it up and show you. Uh, now. I'll, I'll measure it and put some measurements up on the video. Um, but um, this has got to be like, I don't know, early 70s Telecaster neck thick. <laughs> that kind of thickness, it, it's super thick. And that might help uh, explain why the tone is so very good, because there's a lot of wood there. Um, now, some people might not. Think that's good for playing fast. Um, you know, common wisdom is shred rock guitarists like to have a very thin neck, you know, like the Ibanez Wizard necks and all that, super thin, um, tall frets. Whereas this is super thick neck and it's got very shallow frets. And um, I can 
play very fast on this, no problem. Uh, in fact, if anything, it, it's it's uh, really good for playing quick on. So I, I don't really buy that argument that you, you need a super thin neck, but then that's personal taste. So if you don't like thick necks, then you probably won't want to get this, uh, buy this kit. Um, was the other thing to mention? Yeah, okay, so um, the pickups. If there is a weak point in this kit, it, in, in, in uh, obviously the quality of the hardware, the woods, is, is not on a par with uh, an expensive instrument, of course. All I'm saying is that the, 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 wood, the body and the neck are sufficient quality to get a good sound. Um, as is the, the bridge and, 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 and the hard, that, that hardware. I'll talk about the bridge in a minute, but if there is a weak point where the quality really does um, adversely affect the end result, I think it's probably the pickups. Um, now they are pretty cheapy pickups. Um, the humbuckers, you can't split the coils. You, you'd, you'd have to ha hack into them to, to, to be able to split, you know, to take off the the insulation tape and, and splice the wiring if you wanted to split the coils on it. I didn't bother to do that. Um, and as they're so cheap, I thought I'd have some fun. I painted them with the same neon paints that um, I used on the body and then co covered them in resin. But I put some some glitter in the resin before dropping them on. So that gives a really cool effect, um, especially in bright lights because they sparkle. <laughs> They don't, they don't sound terrible, but you can tell they're not as good as a quality pickup. Um, now, I'll, uh, you can see on other videos um, here on YouTube of me playing it, and you can sort of see what you think about, about the quality of the sound, but uh, it would, because it's such a great sounding guitar acoustically, it is well worth the upgrade of putting um, uh, quality pickups in, and I will do that in the future. But I didn't want to do it straight away because obviously, free quality pickups could easily be like 130 quid, and suddenly your your 30 pound guitar is shot up in in, in price. Uh, and uh, I wasn't sure how it would turn out, but now it has turned out really good. I'll I'll, I'll invest certainly in a quality bridge pickup. Um, the single coil in the middle is not too bad at all, you know, I probably wouldn't bother changing that, but the humbuckers aren't, aren't that great. Um, so the bridge itself, so again I was new to headless guitars and um, there was a slight problem with the bridge and, um, well not so much the bridge, but in, in, in the cutout in the body to locate the bridge. So this was a big um, quality control issue um, with this kit. They'd managed to put the recess for the for the bridge shifted too far to the right, i.e. down as you're looking at, at this video right now. And what that meant was when the bridge was located, and you can only locate it in one place because you can see you've got this channel cut out here, this sort of two-step channel the bridge sits into and it's pre-drilled as well for the for the mounting of the, of the base plate that the bridge um, connects to. Once that was in place the strings were f shifted far too far to the right so the high E string was almost off the fretboard and the low E string was kind of you know way too in to the fretboard and you can easily see that just by looking at the two at the, at the, at the G and the D strings they were Um, just by looking at the, the inlay dots, they were far too far to the right like that. So I thought, oh my goodness, how am I going to how am I going to fix that? I didn't want to start trying to cut into this channel and move it, you know, move the the recess, make the recess wider so I could move the bridge to the left. I mean, that would have been impossible anyway because I would have had to have added wood, <laughs> which you can't do, do something like that. It would have been a major hassle to shift the entire bridge this way. Now luckily the design of this bridge is such that there, there was a solution 
Um, it's kind of cool, and I've been on the net and seen, looked at um, Steinberger um, headless bridges, and it is a, it is a copy, an exact copy of one of the Steinberger headless bridge designs. Obviously, that out quality is as good, but um, the way it works is these screws here pull on a claw. If you undo the screw, the claw comes forward and the claw grabs hold of the ball end of the string and as you tighten it it pulls the ball into this cavity here and obviously there's enough um, space in this cavity to take up the slack in the string and, and get it up to tune and the really interesting thing certainly from my point of view was um, that these saddle pieces are not connected to any part of the bridge so like on a Floyd Rose the saddle pieces are connected to um, a bolt and the clamp the bolt that you use to clamp the um, clamp the string into the saddle and then you, you you move that backwards and forwards by adjusting adjusting that bolt here the saddle pieces are only held in held in place by the tension on the string so it's very simple and very quick to um, change the intonation you just slacken off the string and you just slide the, the saddle piece backwards and forwards with your finger. And that's this design enabled the fix because what I did was I just took out the low E string saddle piece and filed down the side of it, filed it right down. And obviously that moved all the remaining saddle pieces this way towards the low E string. And then you can see that I've just shoved in a little a pick. Found, I was looking for a shim basically the right thickness so I ended up taking a pick and just whacked that in there and, and that works <laughs> the other thing I had to do was um, the action was too high even with the you've got these little grub screws in here on the saddle pieces which let you um, adjust the action even with those fully um, unwound wound in the action was still too high so um, I just filed off the bottom of the saddle pieces as well to get the action low now I don't have a super low action, um, I like a sort of a medium action because I think it sounds better and I think there's a point at which low in the action doesn't help you play any quicker anyway it's, it's, it just ends up making more fret buzz and a worse tone but I couldn't even get a medium action so I had, like I said, I had to file off those uh, saddle pieces anything else? Um, how well does it stay in tune? well that is a slight issue and I think I know why um, if you give the whammy bar some abuse it will go out of tune it is not as good as a, as a, um, a, like a Floyd Rose um, if you don't give the whammy bar some handle it will stay in tune fairly well I mean aggressive string bending seems to pull it out of tune but I think I know what's happening and I think what it is is um, it's it's the fact that these saddle pieces aren't um, rigidly attached to the bridge. I think what's happening is as you bend the string or move the whammy bar backwards, uh, move the whole bridge backwards and forwards, these saddle pieces are sliding slightly forwards, slightly backwards, and that's obviously adjusting the tension on the string and and and, and the intonation, and, and so it goes out of tune very slightly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some some something sticky maybe pick honey or something like that and just put it on the bottom of these saddle pieces so that they they can't they sort of stick to this tray of the bridge and, and they don't move backwards and forwards and hopefully that will cure the tuning issue um, yeah anything else uh, oh yeah the electrics so the electrics you know uh, I'm a bit ham-fisted when it comes to soldering but after a few attempts I managed to get it soldered up not, not the need to solve the job in the world but uh, wiring is pretty simple actually um, if you're not sure about wiring there's loads of uh, websites that will give you wiring diagrams um, and yeah um, I love it there's uh, oh, one other thing yeah, yeah you can probably see the angle on the, on the tremolo arm is way too shallow so I need to get that in a vice and bend it so the trem arm is much closer to the body. You know, that's, that's pretty useless like that. Um, well, it certainly is for me. 
So, uh, but that, that's that's a five-minute fix, and I'll, I'll get around to doing that soon. But yeah, um, it's great. And uh, in my other video, I'll show you. You can hear you can hit hear and see it being played. Make you own. See what you think. <laughs>